My name is Blake Jilks, and I'm a pathologist with a special interest in gynecological cancer. I've seen more than 1,000 ovarian cancer cases in my life, but until recently had no real understanding of where these tumors originate. One of the first questions we ask when trying to understand how to prevent cancer is what is the earliest precursor lesion? In the uterine cervix, colon, and breast, for example, we now understand what the precancerous abnormalities look like and can screen patients, allowing removal of those lesions before they become invasive cancer. But what about ovarian cancer? Until a few years ago, no precancerous lesion was known. The breakthrough came through studies on ovaries and fallopian tubes removed from patients with mutations in one of the BRCA genes. Patients with these mutations have inherited susceptibility to develop ovarian cancer, and removal of fallopian tubes and ovaries dramatically reduces that risk. Pathology studies of the apparently normal fallopian tubes and ovaries removed from these patients at first showed nothing. The eureka moment came when the fallopian tubes were very carefully examined. To everyone's surprise, there were tiny precancerous areas commonly found in the fallopian tube. If you don't look, you won't find it. This picture of a uterus, ovaries, and fallopian tubes removed by one of our surgical colleagues shows how we can now examine the fallopian tubes to detect early precursor lesions. In the past, we took one section through the middle of the fallopian tube and ovary, while now the entire fallopian tube and ovary are examined. It is at the fimbriated end of the fallopian tube that we are seeing the early cancers developing. This image and the next are photomicrographs showing a fallopian tube with an early cancer developing in situ. Here is the same lesion at higher magnification. You can see the contrast between the normal and abnormal cells. These abnormal areas have been given the name tubal intraepithelial carcinoma. These early cancerous lesions of the fallopian tube, shown at the top, have all the characteristic molecular changes seen in advanced ovarian cancer. These panels show, through immunostaining, the abnormal nuclei of the tubal intraepithelial carcinoma lesion and an advanced serous carcinoma, with both showing mutations in p53 anti-oncogene and rapid cell division. These microscopic tubal lesions are bona fide early cancers. It was soon established that in patients with BRCA mutations, the precursor is in the fallopian tube in virtually all cases. Hereditary cancers account for at least one-fifth of ovarian serous cancers. So we then asked the question of whether the fallopian tube is also the site of the precursor lesions in the 80% of patients whose cancer is sporadic, that is, not inherited. We had some clues about what the answer would be. In this case, from 2007, it was diagnosed by an experienced pathologist as ovarian cancer arising at the end of the fallopian tube. But on closer examination, there is a normal ovary tucked away, and the mass involves the end of the fallopian tube. Once we dropped our preconceptions, the answer started to become clear. We looked at a consecutive series of cases seen at our hospital, very carefully examining the fallopian tube. Out of 12 serous carcinomas, 10 had either tubal intraepithelial carcinoma or complete obliteration of the fallopian tube by tumor. In only two cases could no mucosal lesion be seen in the fallopian tube. In contrast, in other histological types of ovarian cancer, tubal intraepithelial carcinoma was never seen. This consistent finding of tubal involvement in patients with serous carcinoma has continued to the present day, and we can conclude that most sporadic or non-hereditary ovarian cancers also arise from the fallopian tube. There is a steadily increasing body of evidence that supports this view. In conclusion, most serous carcinomas that were formerly considered to be ovarian, peritoneal, or tubal carcinoma arise from the fallopian tube epithelium. Serous carcinomas account for 70% of ovarian cancer and 90% of cases of advanced stage ovarian cancer. Thus, serous carcinoma accounts for a large majority of deaths due to ovarian cancer.